Hi everyone, New Bugatti here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new OC's album, Intercepted Message. This is the latest full-length LP from everything band, masterminded by uh, one Mr. John Dwyer, who through OC's has covered everything from garage to psych to punk to folk. They're a band that's always hitting fans with a different angle when they have a new album to pitch, putting out some incredible and versatile releases over the years as a result, be that the Orc or a Wii Weird Exits, or The Master's Bedroom, uh, just a couple of records I would recommend from their expanding and dense discography. Now, on the last OC's full length of Foul Form, uh, the group was flirting with pretty much making their heaviest, loudest, noisiest, and most abrasive material to date, and, I mean, mission accomplished. Though I would say some of the tracks were so blunt and so one-dimensional, I didn't really get a whole lot of replay value out of this thing. And I went into this new record hoping for something more layered and dynamic, because I guess on Intercepted Message, uh, electronics and synths take more of a center stage, which was pretty clear given some key singles from the record. Goon, which in so many ways is your typical OC's track, with its medium-fast pacing and groovy pumping drums and guitar riffs. But the vocals on this track are cartoonishly gruff, sounding almost like a Lemmy of Motorhead fame. Meanwhile, the mix is also laced with all these chaotic analog synth bleeps and bloops. And while I wouldn't say the synths are game-changing or anything like that, they do add a little extra something that you don't typically hear on an OC's record. Kind of the same case for the title track on this thing, too. With all of its pulsating and octave-jumping synth work, the vocal approach on this one is noticeably different, too. It has this uh, shouty bellowing quality to it that feels like a callback to the late, great garage punk legend Jay Retard. And I would say this track is merely derivative of him, if not for the fact that the synth work is legitimately fun. Plus, as the song progresses, there's what sounds like some blaring horn sections in the background too, sounding like a garage synth punk blues brothers number. Then there's the opener, Stunner, which does live up to its title, being a stunner, and features loads of colorful, almost proggy, harmonized synth leads uh, popping in in between these crunchy garage riffs, eventually building up into this all-out jam with those guitars and synthesizers uh, syncing up into these squawky lead melodies. But keep in mind, this entire record isn't just OCs plus synthesizers, because I think the band actually delivers one of their most versatile records to date this time around, which is admirable even if some of the riskier bits don't necessarily pan out. As far as some new stuff on this record goes, there's Blank Chems, which at first sounds like a ghoulish garage rocker that could have landed on any number of OC's albums in the past, but these building sinister harmony passages eventually break the track into this cool set of descending chords that are carried pretty much entirely by string sections, which were refreshing and surprisingly well executed despite how rough around the edges OC's records tend to be. Like in the case of Unusual and Cruel, which is like this a really odd and detuned piece of synthy goth rock, which I can see what it's going for, but there's something a little too off about it, like... Uh, milk that was left out to spoil in the sun for a bit too long. Further into the album, we get some kind of winding mutant jams, like in the case of Die Laughing or The Fish Needs a Bike, which I do like the odd energy these tracks bring to the table and that the band can get kind of lost in these moments, but uh, there's not enough change or progression along the length of these tracks to kind of keep them interesting, both really staling out after the first few minutes. However, we do get more bangers on the record in the form of uh, Submerged Building and Sleazoid Psycho, which are both the perfect marriage of Dwyer's zany songwriting, the band's intense performance chemistry, and again, these synthesizers coming in just to add a little extra hint of personality. Sadly though, I don't think this record uh, ties things up all that well in the end, because the very long Always at Night uh, gets old fast, and is pretty much Dwyer trying his hand at making some very dreamy synth pop, but I just don't think it's his strong suit. Given that the atmosphere feels a bit sour, the vocals aren't all that... Uh, blissful or heavenly either, despite very obviously trying to land somewhere within that realm. Plus, the length of the track isn't doing it any favors either. But yeah, overall, I thought this record was pretty fun. Lots of great performances, fun songs, rock and riffs, and those synths coming in adding a little bit of extra seasoning. Definitely a cool and refreshing change of pace for the band, even if there were some tracks that were 
a kind of a bust. Maybe they weren't fleshed out enough, or maybe they just didn't see the band in their bag. You know, again, dreamy synth pop, maybe not the OC strong suit. Still, though, I'm feeling a light seven on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, OCs forever.